Good morning, this is Steve O'Hare from Signal Centre and welcome to edition 488 of Talking Bull. It's the 1st of November 2021. My daughter today, Chloe, is 23. Happy birthday, Chloe. And uh, let's dive into what's um, what's going on, the market highlights. Uh, Japanese markets have been a big outperformer over night and uh, both Nikkei and Topics gaining over 2% in the wake of an election that provided better than expected majority to the ruling Liberal Democrat Party. In turn, this removes some of the political uncertainty cast over the country, providing a boost for risk on assets. This was less convinc convincing elsewhere with Hang Seng and CSI, both losing ground overnight, despite a welcome rise in the Chinese CACs and manufacturing PMI came in at 50.6. This week promises to be a busy one for the market. Central bank meetings, US jobs data and earnings expected provided the basis for volatility as we move forward into Friday's uh, non farm payroll. Uh, today's focus sees the release of final manufacturing surveys throughout Europe and the US and the ISM manufacturing PMI provided the one most notable reading. So uh, let's dive into the markets. Uh, let's uh, start with FX. Why not? Uh, I'll let me just remember to share my screen. So that's a bit better. Let's let's go full screen, shall we? So we're looking at uh, euro dollar, and uh, we can see in the on the weekly chart in Nick, we've got this uh, head and shoulders formation, which is playing out. We we did look like we were getting a retest of the neckline, which we did, and it stalled and aggressively moved lower. So uh, a little bit of dollar strength coming back into the market. We can look at this on the dollar index, and we can see the sort of. Uh, reversal almost from the weakness we saw the previous two weeks and um, that's looking a little bit more positive for the dollar so um, looking for this move to continue through the week um, flipping back to euro dollar on the four hour chart we've broken down below the cloud uh, with this negative momentum we can see the reversal from uh, the sort of late thursday into friday and now below the cloud. And uh, obviously price actually remained within this bearish channel that we were highlighting on the uh, short-term chart. Um, cable also uh, took a bit of a hit, sterling, uh, obviously the dollar strength sterling weakened and um, we saw the uh, price action basically has formed a, tr I would say a double top formation where we uh, saw the break of the neckline, it confirmed, it's, we've seen this previously, where it broke down below this neckline and then rejected, moved higher. So this for me has formed a double top. Uh, let's get some little images on there so it makes it a little bit clearer. Here's the down arrow here and here. And then the neckline for this would be a break basically below. 137.09. Now that um, obviously this this rally higher didn't quite get to um, the previous high, but uh, stalled, and that's even more bearish, a lower high, and uh, looks like we could continue lower, and uh, really looking for potentially a measured move target around about. Let's just extend it lower from here. Measure move target almost down to the 135.80 level. So uh, 135.90. So say 136 area, which which coincides with the previous uh, congested area all the way back here. So that's looking negative for cable. Um, bit of an indecision uh, over the last few hours um, and really looking to sell any rallies in that. Dollar yen has uh, moved higher. Again, we've got the opposite uh, type of uh, formation. Although it's nice to see these at the top of trends, this is like almost a, a channel, sideways channel we're seeing in dollar yen, and uh, really looking for the. Um, it, we can almost see it's a an inverse head and shoulders, and it's breaking higher. But breaking this neckline here at one fourteen um, eleven is uh, one foot fourteen thirty one. Sorry, is pretty key. We've extended higher this morning, 114.44, and just pull back to that level again. So retesting that break. And uh, for me, that's pretty positive. Obviously need to take out the previous swing high 
um, from the 19th of October, where the high came in at 114.70. And uh, that's the next target. A break of there really opens up the upside. And this impulsive move higher can continue. We can see the first one higher. We've had this really complex and for the fifth wave, fifth and final wave in this dollar move. Aussie dollar, um, again, this is under a bit of pressure over the last, um, say, couple of days, really. And uh, we're looking at a slightly bigger um, downward double top formation forming. Uh, have to break the neckline. Here's the, the, the first level. Second level here and the neckline all the way down here. This is the level to watch. 74.54. So that's really a key support area. A break of there should open up a move, uh, an extended move lower to around about the 73.75 area. So um, positive dollar, negative everything, um, all the other pairs against the dollar. Um, uh, and dollar yen is also included in that. That's uh, moving higher, but yen looking very weak indeed. Let's take a look at cryptos. I use this as a gun to head um, call on Friday and it failed. Uh, take a look at got stopped out, stopped me out right at the high, taught me a lesson again and, and moved lower. So we are getting this um, sideways channel formation. Uh, we're trading below. Let's take a look at a slightly higher time frame. This is the formation that I'm really interested in. Looks like it's going to be a little bit more complex than it, it initially was. Um, the right shoulder extending outwards. Uh, but we are posting lower highs, so it still remains under pressure. Um, we can actually draw, redraw this uh, and see the potential break uh, really won't occur till we really we get a clear break of 58,000 in the uh, Bitcoin. Ethereum holding up quite nicely. This is the daily chart, um, again, holding up close to the all-time high as well just a, just uh just well it did form an all-time high but it's retraced from there uh, having these spikes lower um, and we can see volume dropping off momentum dropping off so we're getting bearish divergence again that's the, another classic sign that we could potentially have a reversal ripple hasn't managed to break above the downward trending resistance line so that's remains under pressure um, maybe I should be looking for one of these other uh, coins rather than focusing on Bitcoin. You'll still, um, you probably have a better chance in in these to sort of like try and cut, try and catch this this uh, bearish divergence which I expect to play out. Cardano remains a, a quite muted trading price action. Um, really, sort of like stuck between this 189 and this, this 250 area. To 250, really needs to recapture ground above there for any uh, chance of a recovery. Um, but it doesn't look too great for the alternative coins on the crypto space. Um, taking a look now at commodities. Uh, crude oil recovered, has recovered um, since Thursday. Uh, we had this uh, aggressive dip lower and it recovered in the afternoon into the night and uh, looking re still remains positive on the upside. Bearish momentum is showing on the four, uh, sorry, on the daily chart. Let's have a little look at this uh, channel on the four hour chart that we've highlighted. It keeps retesting this and we're hugging the bottom of the channel. It's almost like uh, an opportunity to redraw that channel um, to really uh, capture see if we can capture even more points than we had before. So we've got this, the start of this upward trend. We've got the, the first real um, dip lower uh, around the um, Ichimoku cloud on the four hour chart. We did breach it here, but we've now hit this line another sort of three or four times. So I've moved that channel slightly lower to, um, to give a, a more accurate supportive um, trend line. We are trading uh, around, well, within the four hour Ichimoku cloud. This is really key. Um, and so we remain positive while above, uh, well, within the cloud and above this trend line on WTI crude oil. Um, levels to watch really, uh, really need to see a break of the $83 level to get excited for the upside. And um, 
if we do get a confirmed break of the $80 level on the downside, then we should have a, a deeper correction. But for me, it seems to be um, continuing to buy dips in there. The We can redraw also this um, the, the Brent crude oil. Um, this is clearly broken this initial channel we had drawn in and um, this can be though this can be redrawn and actually widened uh, to sort of capture a couple of data points on the upside um, but yeah looking a bit messy under the four hour Ichimoku cloud um, we can see a little bit of rejection although we're on the front foot this morning and looking to take out this resistance at $84 we still fit face cloud resistance uh, but really need a clear break of 85.78 to really um, confirm the uh, the bullish trend, the, this real grind higher to continue. Um, on the opposite side of that, if we'd get a break of 82.30, which was this spike low, and, um, and a clear break of 81.42, then again, we'll be on the negative stance. But for now, again, dip buying in oil seems to be the way forward gold uh, has rejected again this uh, attempt to move higher above the 1814 level stalled and has moved lower and we're under a little bit of pressure although we've seen a little bit of a recovery from 1772 took out the 1780 uh, support on friday um went down to 1772 but it's bounced nicely 1785 trading uh, again, I still feel we are in this um, downward channel and still maybe potentially need a retest of this 1677 level on a longer term basis. Um, the uh, the overall formation that I'm looking at, as I've spoke about, is this bullish flag formation, which means that on a longer term basis, I do expect gold to move higher. But it really is having a lot of bother at the moment trying to recapture ground above uh, the 1834 and the 1858 uh, resistance area. So a gold under a printed pressure this morning. Short term time frame on the hourly chart, um, looking really to sell into rallies around about the 1790 to 1800 level and um, looking to target a move lower in gold. The dollar strength obviously will assist in this. Um, silver under pressure also. Uh, we've got support coming in at 23.66 and resistance at about $24. We've got the cloud above here. So we've got this downward trending uh, resistance line we can draw in also. Take the trend line from the top. Take these nice two points here and that comes in nicely around about the Ichimoku cloud. So uh, really looking to sell into uh, resistance around $24. Uh, initially, supportive area would be around about $23.66 uh, and below that. Now, taking a look at, let's take a look at indices now. Indices, as we said in the initial uh, run up, off to a positive start this morning, looking really good. Uh, FTSE we'll look at first of all. We, we're seeing um, highs, really, which we haven't seen uh, uh, since uh, 20, well, since before the pandemic, really. We're getting up to those highs. Um, so the middle of February uh, 2020, uh, we were trading around 74.21 and uh, we're pushing up to there now. 72.80 on the front foot this morning, FTSE, looking very positive indeed. Again, that is helped by the dollar. And we're breaking above uh, some nice, um, resistance that we we thought we saw on uh, early part or middle of last week uh, and look to be attempting to move higher there nice little channel it's uh, reacted higher bullish hammers posted and above the cloud remained above the cloud and continues to look pretty strong uh, we've got a nice little trend line we can also draw on the four hour chart and that provides support below the cloud the DAX also looking pretty good. Um, the spike lower that we saw on Friday was bought into uh, around about 15,500. That was the low and that uh, led to a catalyst of a, a really sort of high impulse move uh, and uh, good volume on that as well. Momentum very strong, uh, really reacted from the supportive area from the Ichimoku cloud and has taken out some decent resistance levels and um, 15,000. 
1,782 taken out. Really, next level of resistance looks to be around about the 15,940, another 100 odd points to the upside. Um, and wouldn't be surprised if we uh, see that within the next 24 hours. Dow Jones, all time high. Um, and why not? We, 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 we're quite used to seeing these all time highs in, in Dow Jones. Uh, let's get a little bit of a price label on there. Trading there now. 36,000, just below there we're trading. 35,978 uh, at the moment. Uh, looking pretty uh, strong going into this morning, obviously assisted by the Asian Pacific or the Japanese markets. Um, same with uh, NASDAQ. New all time highs trading there now, 15,920. The 16,000 would be a nice real psychological level to overtake today. Um, and it seems to be no slowing this bad boy down or these bad boys down. 40, uh, 4,625. So everything looking very rosy on the uh, US side of things on the indices. Aussie dollar has to, sorry, Aussie 200 has a little bit to do to catch up. Um, uh, had a reaction from 72.93, we're 100 points higher from there and look to be extending higher as well this morning. Um, as we mentioned, China was under a bit of pressure. It's recovered quite nicely now, up to 15,807 and looking to move higher. Uh, Hang Seng uh, dragging its heels a little bit, but um, could be a little bit of a turnaround here. We've seen the MACD looking to cross over and there was a message we saw looks to be stalling and the Nikkei has taken out the resistance at 29,483 and looking to extend higher from there so looking very strong on the indice front uh let's talk about talking bull uh not really oh sorry let's talk about gun to head challenge not really a lot to say from my perspective uh really uh feel like a bit of a, bit of a letdown trying to fade this bitcoin um move and really was sort of like wanting to maybe look today at some indices and see if there's any real opportunity in here to sort of jump on the bandwagon. Um, Aussie 200 maybe looks to not have done enough yet. And China as well looks, looks for a bit of potential for the upside. Um, but I'm going to go with gold. I'm uh, the dollar strength to continue. I'm going to fade gold. I think we've got, uh, let's jump onto the hourly chart to give a little bit more explanation on this. Um, we've seen this correction higher. I expect dollar strength to continue. I think this will impact gold. Ideally, I'd like to sell it a bit higher around about the 1800. That seems to be a, a decent level to uh, fade into, but I've got a gun to my head, so I'm going to get short here. I'm gonna have a tight stop um we're, we're getting short at uh 1784 let's round it round it up and um let's have a stop at 1794 nice 10 dollar stop and look to take out um well 1764 looks like uh, a nice round number sounds like a nice not nice round number to target so that's my gun to the head uh, trade idea today selling gold shorting gold looking for uh, this uh, this bearish uh, move that we've seen on the short term chart to continue uh, based really on the dollar strength expectation expectation so uh, what do we expecting uh, for the rest of the day the day ahead um, really not a lot today we've got 2 p.m we've got us ism manufacturing expected to fall to 60.4 from the previous reading of 61.1 uh, we are, have got other earnings due out as well this week we'll pick them up uh when they're due, due on the morning um but un, uh, uh till then uh, i hope this has been a, a sort of a summarized wrap up that's um going to get your day off to a good one and look forward to joining again tomorrow. Thanks for joining me.